What's Up. So I really liked Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, otherwise known as Secret Project 3 from Brandon Sanderson's Year of Sanderson. I don't quite know where it sits in terms of Tress. I did like it a lot better than SP2, which I had some problems with. I think it's even right now with Tress, I'll have to see. There was a lot of romance, which isn't always my favorite, but overall, I just loved the world building, loved the story, and it has my favorite art of all three, which I feel like is saying a lot because all the art has been very incredible. I am so excited to get my physical copy of this one. Anyway, that's besides the point. That's not why you're here today to hear about my general thoughts. You're here today to talk about Cosmere Connections and there are a ton of them. So I cannot wait to discuss theories with you. But before we jump in, make sure if you're listening to this just on audio, you actually go and watch the spoiler warning I give at the beginning of this video because I list out specifically which books I might spoil when talking about Cosmere Connections and I wanna make sure you don't get spoiled accidentally. With that being said, see you after the jump. Okay, so instead of doing this chronologically by what we found in the book, I am going to have grouped all the Cosmere things by overall themes, because I think that will help with our discussions. Okay, let's start with the narrative. So first, because I don't spoil myself before these books come out, I had no idea we were gonna have Hoyd as a narrator again, like he was for Tress. So that was fun and unexpected. Now, one thing I feel like is different in this book than in Tress is in Tress, there was a lot of discussion and like trying to figure out theories of who Hoyd was telling the story to. Whereas in this case, I feel like it's pretty dead obvious that he is talking to people on Roshar. And there are several instances where he references Rosharian things like I have when he says the painter looked Vedan, paler skin than you'd find on Roshar, a drunk chul, Reshi Isles, spheres, references to cultivation, and also the sleepless, which we'll talk more about later in this video. So I feel like it's pretty clear with the overwhelming Roshar references, that's who's Hoyd telling the story to. Oh, and I wanna mention, cause someone said this on my last video. In case you don't know, Roshar is the planet that the Stormlight Archive takes place on. Now there are two references I noticed to things on Skadriel, which is where Mistborn takes place. And that was a mention to Burning Tin and also the Skadrians would have called it Rice. So I have a theory about why that might be in here, but I'm gonna leave it to a later section, but I did notice those. And we get to see design. Here's the thing, it's great. We wondered where she was in Tress and now we get to see her that she's alive and well here. I still don't think this answers where she was in Tress because we see them leave together at the end of this novel. So I'm still, I still have questions, like where is she in Tress? But it is nice to see her and it's very cool to see how they've used light weaving to kind of give her a semblance of a body or an image. I just loved seeing more of design because I think she has a great personality for Hoyd and we haven't really got to see a lot of her personality yet, so I really enjoyed that. I also wanted to ask you guys, because she says she doesn't make a very good sword, and I wanted to know, ask you guys why you think that is. I know that Calden, for example, prefers Syl to be in a spear form, and Lift jokingly puts Windel in a fork form. So what do you think is the form that Hoyd uses, or you think he just doesn't use a sword? That's kind of a just for fun speculation. Let me know in the comments. However, things with design, let's move on to shards and the magic system because I do think design has some stuff we need to talk about there. And that's with light weaving off of Roshar. Now I personally have felt that a big thing we have been kind of discussing after Rhythm of War and maybe an Oathbringer and some of the Mistborns is they're clearly trying to get investiture off planet. That's a goal of a lot of people in the Cosmere right now. And particularly we've talked about how Stormlight is one of the easiest ways to get investiture. And so if Stormlight can get off planet, that makes a big difference. So here we see a bean, a spren design, who is extremely connected to Roshar off of Roshar. So we know they figure it out and what the implications of that are for. Now the question is, is that light weaving fueled by Stormlight or another form of investiture? It, are we seeing Stormlight off planet? I'd love to hear what you guys think about that. I do think though this is indicating that that does happen, which I guess we knew. And you know, when does it happen, I guess still. But it was cool to see that that was there because I think that obviously is probably one of the biggest implications for the rest of the Cosmere is once we know how to get investiture and things extremely connected to their planet off, that's when we're really gonna see a lot more things interacting. Okay, and obviously in shards, we get a new shard name. Don't think we've ever heard of virtuosity before, so that's pretty cool. So virtuosity means to have great skill like at an artistic pursuit. So I think that makes a ton of sense for how we saw her splintered, well, I said her, 
Is Virtuosity ever referred to as a her as the vessel in Yumi? I actually don't know. So their splinters make sense with that name that they appreciate artistic expression clearly when we saw with the painting and the stacking of rocks. So I think that's cool. Also, I think Virtuosity is the first shard we've ever heard splintered themselves purposefully. So I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. I wonder why they splintered themselves, what benefit they thought it was, because I think all the other splinters were not intentional. So I think that that feels, my theory is that is going to be some sort of clue or hint for how everything all went down in the beginning. Okay, moving on, we also get some more cognitive shadow information, particularly with Yumi, when design talks about having enough spiritual aspect to change and reshape something to match your sense of self. Now, I guess that's not really new. I was thinking in Stormlight, I think it's Dawn Shard with the Reshi King. Is that the right king? And they have shown that they get healed to their spiritual or cognitive self, how they view themselves. And so I think maybe this is a similar vein. I do wonder why Yumi was so invested that that automatically happened. But I thought that was interesting to hear about that in Cognitive Shadows and also that the spirit web knows which body is yours and your connections. So I think we will see more of that. In fact, we've already, when design talks about investiture storing memories, we've actually already seen that from that ending scene of Rhythm of War with Hoyd. So I thought that was kind of another interesting connection that he's obviously been researching that. And back to Yumi, it's saying that she is as invested as an Elantrian. And at first she says, you're as invested as a return and then no an Elantrian. Did we know that Elantrian's investiture were higher than Return's investiture? I felt like I didn't know that on the scale. I always kind of assumed they were about the same. So I thought it was interesting that we actually got a significant scale. Like Return are less invested than Elantrian's. Okay, I should have said this earlier. Sorry, I tried to make this as, as organized as I can, but we also see a Fab... We also see a Fabriol. Fabriol, oh no, get me in trouble, that's fine. We also see a Fabriol off Roshar being used. Again, very curious about what's powering it. Probably Stormlight, right? So that just goes back into that earlier. We also see an awakened machine on this planet. Again, um, this was interesting to me in particular because I don't feel like we've seen a lot of when investor and magic goes really wrong. Like we've seen it now on this planet. We've seen it on the Force of Hell, Silence's planet which is totally, bl I'm blanking on right now. That's fine, I'll put it here. And there, and otherwise when we've seen like awakened tech, it seems like it's been more positive, like how we saw it in Tress. So to see this machine awakened and then go totally wrong because of the command it was given, I thought that was super fascinating. And I like seeing that because I think it is slowly introducing us to the dangers we're probably gonna see in late stage Cosmere when these powers start interacting and the investiture starts mixing. So I did really like to see that. Okay, and one more thing, we also have a sleepless on this planet. We see her um, as Masaka or her sleepless name, which couldn't pay me to say, right? Uh, Chinikadakordich, nailed it, uh, of the 60th Horde. So um, if you don't remember, sleepless is something we have seen previously on Roshar, which is the Stormlight Archive planet. And in particular, if I'm remembering correctly, we saw them the most in Dawn Shard, but we don't have a ton of information about them, I feel like. We don't know a lot about them, so it was kind of cool seeing another character in a completely different context. The last thing for Shards and Magic System section, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on Heon, which I'm calling like Neon, Hion, I, Heon. Uh, it's cool, it's a new way to use Investiture. I don't have a lot to say about it, so if there's anything I missed with that, let me know. Okay, let's move on to what I'm calling new planet or Cosmere planets. So we do have a new planet, which is Kamashi, and it's in the Utah system, and it is a dual planet system, also with the other planet, Utah. Now, Hoyd mentions that you might know Utah, and that is because that is where the show Dell live. Now, we haven't seen a ton of the show Dell, so if you need a reminder, the show Dell are um, one of three species that were originally on Yolen. Um, along with dragons and humans. And Yolen is the planet where the shattering of Andalasium, I've given up on that word, happened, where the original shattering happened. Okay, did we get that straight? So, Yodel, one of three peoples populating the planet where the original shattering was. So, 
find it very interesting that we get a glimpse of like that planet. I'm excited to see more of the show Dell. And we actually got a glimpse of them again when they go to the other planet, which is the Utah planet, the water planet. Okay, you guys get it. Now it also seems that the virtuosity splintering was more towards Komashi than Utah, but I am curious to see how the splintering of virtuosity affected Utah. Now, since they landed there, that makes me think maybe we'll get something like a novella or something on that planet, or maybe it won't come till the last book, Dragonsteel. But I do find that very interesting. We're seeing more of that. So lots of Cosmere. Hoyt also mentions that design has planned for them to escape to the Iron 7 way station. And as far as I know, we know nothing more of that, just that it's an Iron 7 way station. So some sort of space centered thing. The Shroud, I am interested in the Shroud. It did immediately remind me of Silence Montaigne in the Forest of Hell. Threnody, that's it is, it came to me. I'm interested to see how that connects, but two tidbits I thought were interesting that Brandon said in one of the live streams was that he said Nightblood would be able to feed on the Shroud and if you were burning tin, you could see through the Shroud. I think that makes sense since we know the Shroud is like investiture of some sort, souls. So it makes sense, those two things, but I do think it's like telling us, yes, we're on the right track. We understand what this is. Second to last thing I wanna talk in this section is at one point Hoyd says, Fey, Sion, spirit. And it's like, we know what a Sion is and we know what the spirits are. So what's a Fey? I don't think I'm forgetting. I don't think we've used the word Fey on any other planet. So is that a kind of subtle tidbit that we are gonna see investiture take the form of Fey's on another planet? I'm excited for that. And finally in this section, I did think it was interesting that they used the term Warden Nimi when the only other use of the term we've heard Nimi is from Seth in the Stormlight Archive saying Sword Nimi. That might be nothing. That might just be a linguistic thing, but it did like immediately ping to me. So I'd be curious on your thoughts and if that's anything or just coincidence. Okay, you probably got us getting here. Timeline. Where is Yumi and the Nightmare Painter in the grand scope of the timeline of the Cosmere? Now, this is just my personal opinion, but I think it is very late in the Cosmere. And that is because we hear of the Iron Seven way station, which is clearly some sort of space station, right? So that indicates to me very late in the timeline. Also, some other things, um, we see how advanced technologically um, parts of the planet are. When we see like Heon, it's like very urban style setting. Also some things that Hoyd said, saying things like, yes, Kilato had things like light bulbs as are common on many planets. Him mentioning light bulbs when he know we know he is talking to Rosharians makes me think this is much further in Roshar's future when they perhaps have similar technology. Something else that pinged to me that I mentioned briefly earlier is how he flippantly used some skadrial things like tin and the rice and how in Tress, we got that whole iron eyes thing. Here's a theory. Maybe Skadriel is like, was one of the planets to first reach out to other planets. Maybe their magic or whatever their system is extremely forward in exploring the Cosmere is got out there first and kind of brought that stuff and is now like everyone kind of knows who they are. I have some evidence for this. We know at the end of era two, we have some significant characters who are going to be world hoppers. We know that Kelsier's goal is to get off planet. So that's my little theory about why there's some of those mentions in there. Let me know what you think about that. To sum up though, I think Yumi might be one of the latest things in the Cosmere we've read so far. Okay, and finally some random stuff that didn't go in any of the other categories, but I wanna talk about. I didn't think it was interesting that Hoyd mentions the Fibonacci sequence. Yes, we have the Fibonacci sequence. We know the golden ratio. Does that imply that the Cosmere also has that? Is that weird? Sometimes I'm like, I know the Cosmere doesn't have Earth in it, but every once in a while, something like this stops me. Your thoughts, <laughs> discuss. Also, the thing about physics and floating plants and how it just sneaks by physics. Did I miss something? I was, I, was that just because it was like secret? Is there more to that in the investiture that I'm not recognizing? Again, you tell me. That was the one thing I couldn't come up with a theory for. Okay, I think I covered everything I noticed Cosmere-wise in the book. There was obviously some extra like one-off mentions, but if I, they didn't have like a huge significance 
or thing to discuss, I left them out of this video. But if there's anything large I missed, let's see. Also, what did I ask you to weigh in on? Weigh in on design, weigh in on Stormlight being off Groshar, weigh in on what I said about Skadrial, weigh in on where you think this is in the timeline. I'd love to hear it all. I'd also love to hear how you liked Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. Are you like me and obsessed with the art? I am so excited that these are shipping on time. I've already gotten my shipping notification. So I think most people are gonna get this this month in physical copy. Super excited for everybody. As always, if you like these kind of deep dives, please like and subscribe. That is the best way to support me. And if you wanna see what I'm currently reading as well as other nerdy rants, you can check me out on Instagram at bookborn.reviews. I'll see you next time. Bye.